Hey guys, it's Elucid. Uh, I think I'm going to do another Let's Play for Lemuria. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I've played a Pop Kill Nation. I kind of started off my channel with uh, with Airmore, and that was a long time ago now. That was like two or three years. So, <coughs> I'm sorry, there's still some Pop Kills I haven't played. I haven't played Asphodel, but honestly, fuck Asphodel. Um, I haven't played Therados, and Therados actually is pretty good. I might try them at some point but you know sometimes you just you just want to play some comfort nations and i kind of feel like playing lemuria i thought about playing it and then not recording it and i think that's what i posted in the game but <clears throat> they're kind of they're fun i just i have so much fun playing them so uh with that uh anyway i think we're going to play lemuria again and i'm gonna record it uh so lemuria if you don't know is a nation of uh of ghosts uh, some of which are immortal. Your most powerful kind of commander units you summon are immortal. You can't recruit anything out of your capital. Uh, you can get indies out of indie sites, or like indie provinces. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can't you can't recruit anything. The way you get troops is by summoning them. And uh, I'll just we'll pull up a test game real quick, and I'll just show you. This is we'll do this one. So, um, <clears throat> there's, there's a few different spell or different units we can get. We can get, um, the Shadow Tribune, which are these guys, um, they're Holy One. Um, there are, um, Centurions, which are these guys. Uh, oh, I need to probably talk a little bit about them. We're not going to do like a full national overview. There's a few things significant about them. One is they get dark power, which is nice. Um, they have a paralyzed attack, which kind of sucks. Um, they don't have magic power, which a lot of our troops do have, uh, and they're priests, and they can lead a fair amount of undead. So mostly what these guys are for is for reanimating. They can reanimate shadows and dispossess spirits. So mostly they're for reanimating and moving troops around. Um, but if you're fighting in darkness, they actually have pretty decent stats. Um, so you could consider, based on your bless, potentially trying to thug them uh, if you put gear on them. But that's pr probably not how you're going to want to spend your gems for a while. Uh, but you would have to definitely replace the weapon. And you would want to be fighting in darkness, like in a cave. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's like a super niche use. These guys are mostly for reanimating and moving troops around. Um, next up, we have the Centurion. The Centurion, no magic pass, but he has fear built into his chassis. Um, he's a, an amphibian, does not get a penalty for being underwater. And... Um, Cold resistant, poison resistant, of course. Uh, chill aura, ethereal, spirit sight, and magic power one. What this means is in magic power three, he's going to have, or in magic three, he's going to have very ridiculous stats. He's going to get uh, plus one to. Oh, it doesn't really say here, but it's going to get plus one uh, MR. Which is actually nice, because normally you take magic scales, you're going to lose MR. Well, with these guys, in magic 3, you're actually going to gain 2 MR. Um, at magic 2, you only gain 1 MR. And at magic 1, you gain 1 MR. So, anyway. <clears throat> uh, but you're also going to get attack and defense, and I think also strength. So, you can see here we get plus 3 strength, we get plus 3 uh, attack. And we get plus three defense. I don't think it affects anything else. Yeah. Um, but what you'll notice is 20 base attack and defense is very, very high. Uh, very high. Especially when combined with the fact that we're ethereal and we have fear built in. Um, so these guys are quite good. Even not in magic skills. These guys are very, very durable units. They're kind of like a significantly stronger bane. Um, and you get them right away. Um, they're very helpful in expansion. They're a really important part of, I think, playing the nation, though they will be outshined later. Um, the next unit we can get is the uh, the Senator. Uh, the Senators are kind of like the Shadow Tribune. Um, one second, let me pause it. I'm going to get all these summoned. Okay, so uh, I've got this pulled back up, and um, yeah, I've summoned all the units. So uh, we have the Acolytes, who are Holy 1. Um, we have the Senators, who are Holy 2. They have Fear, 
They have Steel Strength, which is an armor negating attack, and it actually does damage. Um, so this is 17 AN damage, which is not bad. Um, they can buff themselves up with uh, Unholy Power and then Protection of Sepulcher, which in Magic 3 is going to put them up at uh, 22 ma uh, Magic Resistance and 22 Attack. So they're almost always going to hit with this. Uh, and then they're going to have very fine defense. Um, they also have Fear. They do not have any real armor. Well, they have Natural Protection 8, which actually isn't horrible. But if you stick armor on these guys, especially combined with the natural protection, which I think actually is higher than the Centurions, yeah. Oh no, they have eight too. Um, if you stick armor on these guys, this is actually a pretty good attack. Um, so this potentially could be useful for taking out um, thugs or kind of super combatant E units, because uh, they're going to have pretty fine stats. Uh, but the problem here is that uh, that they're not immortal, um, and they're a relatively big gym investment. Uh, they're 15. And if you compare it to the consoles, which are 25, um, I think the console, I think it's very hard to justify if you can, <coughs> I'm sorry, if you can get a console uh, buying a senator instead. Uh, and this is the console. The console, uh, he has a short sword, so he loses the really cool... Um, uh, steel strength attack, um, but what he gains is holy three. Um, that's going to allow him to cast apostasy, which will, is basically a charm spell. Uh, it's also going to allow him to do a bigger uh, unholy power and a uh, battlefield wide MR negates mass protection um, protection of sepulchre, which is uh, an MR buff like anti magic. Um, <clears throat> he's immortal has a Chillara, has a Fear, um, and now my particular Bless, I've got uh, Ethereal, so um, that's always on there, so you'll see that little tag, but uh, also has Magic Power. Um, his default stats are pretty sick. Um, the Short Sword's going to give one attack and one defense, so you'll see this is 20 attack, and then his defense is 19. It would normally be 18, but he gets a little bump from the Short Sword, so if you replace the weapon, you know, it's not going to go up quite as much if you put a high defense weapon on there. Um, but once, the real way to look at his stats is once he does, uh, Unholy Power on himself, he's going to be 24 attack with the base weapon. Um, his native attack is going to be, um, 23. And, uh, he's, this won't get modified up, but, uh, anyway, it's pretty, pretty damn high at 19. Uh, you do have, so these guys are definitely capable, <clears throat> I would say they're high-end thugs, uh, though they do have the, uh, the vulnerabilities that all undead thugs have, like, um, you know, they're, they're vulnerable to, uh, to death magic in particular. All thugs are going to be kind of vulnerable to astral magic, you know, soul slay and the like. These guys worry about it more because they're immortal, but they're not really more vulnerable because... Um, especially if we're fighting in Magic Dominion, you can see that, uh, that yeah, we're going to be MR-19. And then when we do um, Protection of the Sepulchre or whatever on our on ourselves, uh, that's going to jump all the way up to 23, um, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, and then without any items. Right? So 23 Magic Resistance, no items is, is great. Um, next, we can put in an Amulet of Anti-Magic, and we're in Astral Nation. It's going to take us a while to be able to build amulets of anti-magic, uh, but that's going to put us up to, what, we said 23? So that's gonna put us up to 27 magic resistance, which is phenomenally high. Um, the problem, a little bit, is that um, death magic, like dust to dust, wither bones, will just chew these guys up, and it doesn't really matter how much MR they have if they're getting hit with dust to dust and wither bones. <clears throat> um, so anyway, they, you know, like, like many things, they have kind of critical weaknesses. Um, which, yeah. But the, the thing that I think is important about these is uh, when they come online, like when you get them out, which, you know, could be, you can start with an, you basically need to have a pretender to get them out year one or you need to empower, uh, with like year zero. Uh, if you want to get them out year one, that's of course with a dormant bless. 
Uh, when they come out, they are very strong often. If the, if the specific counters don't exist, even things like magic weapons, which would tear these guys up a lot, or tear most of your things up, these guys are strong enough. Um, and some people will probably type in the comments that I'm wrong. Um, but these guys are strong enough to wreck shit with magic weapons. Um, but you'll, you'll see in the game how we end up doing it. Um, presuming it happens. I'm, I'm not very far in the game yet. But, um, anyway, uh, we'll leave that as a surprise for how we're going to do that, uh, if we can. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, these guys, mwah, very good. like them. Uh, next up, we have uh, our mages. Uh, our first mage, let's see if we find one. Here's one. Uh, an Acolyte. These are reasonably cheap. They, uh, they cost... You need death too. Which you start off, what you start off the game with is one of these guys. So you can summon an Acolyte because they're death too. To get the, the immortal units, you need to be death three, which is basically going to take an empowerment of your pretender. Um, but at 11 gems, if you really want some early research, these guys are reasonable to invest money into. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit in game, but the problem with putting money into these guys for early research is that you're not putting things into consoles and grand lemurs, and the research, while it will pay off, it will pay off in the long run. And there is a very good chance if you're playing Lemuria that you need things to pay off in the short run, because people do not usually like having Lemuria as a neighbor. Um, and so some games you'll get where people don't really want to attack you because you're kind of a pop-kill... Pop wasteland and they just would rather ignore you because starting next to Lemuria is never good news. You're always like, sigh every time uh, you start next to Lemuria, but uh, there is a very good chance that you get a coalition formed against you. And um, if you have invested a lot into research, that research, there's nothing you're going to get within the first 20 turns of the game, I don't think, that is going to really justify the research. Now that I could be wrong about, but like the big things which are going to really change the game for you, like darkness, rigor mortis, all those things, they are, are significantly farther down the line than what you're going to get to from a few acolytes. And in most cases, if you want to be stronger earlier, you want consoles or grand lemurs, and mostly you want consoles. Um, next up, we have the Thaumaturg, which is the unit I already showed you, uh, this guy. Um, kind of interesting because they have a life drain attack now. They're death two. What does this mean? It means with a death gem they can do invulnerability. And invulnerability with life drain and then really fucking good stats. Uh, you can see we've got an experience bonus here, but normally would be 19. And these guys again can give themselves the, uh, the attack buff too, so they're going to hit almost every time with life drain. Um, <clears throat> they can do skeletal body too, uh, and they can do astral shield. All those things are going to combine to make these guys reasonably hard to kill. Um, they don't have any base protection, though. So that is kind of a, a weakness of these guys compared to uh, the priest chassis, is that they have no base protection built into them. Uh, how can you use them? Well, um, it, I think these guys are a bit tricky to use, basically because they're not immortal and they're an Astral One Mage, which means they're very vulnerable to magic tool. In theory, you could do communions with these guys, and it would be, you know, really cool. Got a, got a cool communion set up. Um, in practice, it just... I don't know. It depends who you're fighting. If you're, if you're fighting a nation that doesn't really have the have access to Magic Duel, uh, you could consider doing uh, using these guys for communions. Um, the problem, I think, that Lemuria has, one, well, one of their problems, they've got a, several problems, is that it's very hard for them to guarantee winning a straight-up fight. Um, because they kind of get hard-countered pretty easily, even if you bring a lot of stuff. And if you bring these guys to a big fight, uh, and you lose it, then, you know, it's, you can't, they don't respawn, they don't get replaced. So, um... So anyway, that, that's kind of the issue with these guys, is if if you're a nation which has a real hard time guaranteeing winning a straight-up fight, um, the thing that makes it good as a nation is that even if you don't have, like, even if you take big losses, you will be able to rebound pretty quickly, you'll get more undead troops, you'll get more mages, your uh, immortals will respawn, all these things. Like, you're, you're 
you're kind of like the the crackhead in the Dave Chappelle show, right? Where you get knocked down and you just it's like a bobblehead, you just pop back up, right? And that's kind of how Lemuria is. So these guys are kind of they're anti thematic with that. Um but they're they're definitely useful. It's just you have to be pretty sure you're gonna win fights. And that's I think really hard to do as Lemuria. And then next up, we get our final unit, which you need to be death three to get. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bad cough. Uh, which is the Grand Lemur. And the Grand Lemur is 50 death gems, so you could have two consoles for every Grand Lemur. And you might say, what could ever justify spending death gems on something other than consoles? And the answer would be a Grand Lemur. Now, why are these guys important? Well, there's a few reasons they're important. One is that they're... Um, well, let's just go through their paths. They're Astral 2, Death 3... And then they get a random for Astral, Death, Air, or Water. And we'll talk about each of those. So Astral 3, um, these guys are going to be much more resistant to Magic Duel, which is something you always have to be a little careful of. Um, as long as you don't have gear on them, you actually don't really care if people try to Magic Duel these guys because they're immortal. And they'll just pop back up. Whereas And there's a pretty good chance these guys will kill whoever's trying to Magic Duel them. So... Um, Anyway, they're, they're pretty good for that. Um, they can also teleport without needing any gear. And uh, all of these guys are going to be able to do Invulnerability, um, Soul Vortex, um, Astral Shield, uh, Resist Magic. Well, you already have that built in with basically Holy. Um, and then Skeletal Body if you need to. Those are the things that are going to basically come on everyone's. The Astral ones, you know, they're also getting closer to Soul Vortex. I mean, um, Soul Drain, which is the end of to be Astral uh, 5, Death 5, but with um, a Skull Staff and a uh, Starshine Skull Cap, and then you cast Power of the Spheres, you will be up to that critical threshold to do Soul Drain. Um, so these guys can kind of do that. Soul Drain is a little meh. I mean, it's it's obviously, I mean, it's pretty good, but I don't know if it's going to, like, win you the battle a lot of times. Um, what it's basically going to do is do a little bit of chip damage to the enemy army and keep you at zero fatigue, no matter what you do. Um, so, anyway. Uh, but these guys can teleport. I dig them. I, I mean, I, I like these enough that I picked them up in one of the All-Stars games I played uh, as a summon. So, uh, they're pretty good. The other important thing about them is they're stealthy. Um, and Stealthy Astral is one of the better combos in the game. So, having a Stealthy Astral dude is really good. Uh, what it means is you can, basically, you can hide beneath thugs and super combatants or whatever to block Mind Hunt. Is that something you're going to be really worried about? Uh, and two, it means that um, you can basically teleport on top of stuff and then slink away. Um, and there's almost nothing that can kill a teleporting... I mean, there's almost nothing that can kill an Astral Mage that's sneaking away. Um, so it's a very safe way to raid if you know what you're going into and you're pretty sure you can kill it. Um, okay, what are the other important things about them? One is you'll notice that they have ridiculous stats. Now, part of that's going to come from the magic staff, which gives us four defense. So his base uh, defense is kind of the same. Um, his attack skill actually is less phenomenal um, than some of our other stuff. Um, but defense is still is still pretty crazy. So... Um, I would say these guys... Okay, we need to talk about the other randoms, too. Um, the, the death randoms, you're basically going to be Astral 2, Death 4. You can pretty easily do Power of the Spheres, which gets you up naked to Death 5. That is enough to do pretty much anything you want to do with death. Right? You can do... Um, you know... I guess Life After Death doesn't work on Undead. I actually don't know if it does. Let's take a look. I've never really cast this Lemuria, which you would think you, you would. Um, undead units are not affected. Okay, it doesn't say it here, but it says it here. So I, I assume that's the case. And I've never seen that. But uh, you can do Rigor Mortis, um, which is pretty nice. Um, the death ones are, you know, they can do crazy stuff. And then obviously they're going to do Horde of Skeletons and Drain Life and stuff really well too. Um <clears throat> So it's a death randoms. The air randoms are very special. They can do Wind of Death and Wailing Winds, which are both phenomenal on this nation. So uh, I would say the air randoms are probably the best randoms. 
Uh, they can also do things like mist form, but the thing is most of the time mist form is not going to be great because you're going to be uh, basically the things you're going to be fighting are going to be having magic weapons anywhere. They're not going to be winning. Uh, but it's an option. You can also do mirror image, which is pretty okay. Um, especially if you're able to stack defense up really high and do twist fate. So I think the air randoms are pretty clearly the best. Um, though certainly each of them have different roles they can perform. Um, the next random is the water random. And the water random uh, is going to be your best underwater uh, thug because basically there's a, uh, a bunch of stuff you can do underwater like uh, ice shield, uh, liquid body, uh, wave warriors. Now you'll have to make a priority call. Mm, sorry, had a bit of the, the yawns there. You have to make a priority call for what spells you're going to want to script because especially with the off path or like with the, the air and the, the water randoms, there's going to be more spells for you to cast uh, than uh, you obviously have the script spots for. Uh, that being said, <clears throat> uh, the other things that a water random can do is they can do Stygian Rains, which is down here. Uh, for this, they're going to need to do Power of the Spheres, or they're going to need a Water Bracelet. But they can do Stygian Reigns, which is really good for a Ghost Army. Um, if there's anything you're fighting in the other army that doesn't have magic weapons. Even if only, like, half the units have magic weapons and half don't, which you would normally be like, okay, well, basically everybody has magic weapons. Stygian Reigns is going to have a big impact there, because all of your guys have magic weapons. Uh, it's going to give Invulnerability 15 to everybody. Um, so, yeah, Stygian Reigns... Pretty good. What else? Um, the other things that you can kind of do with Death Water are down here. Um, you can do uh, Streams from Hades. These guys will need a lot of boosters to kind of get up to this. So you'll probably have to empower one in water. Or you're going to have to ha find some other way to get a Robe of the Sea. Well, no, you'd need a Robe of the Sea and a Water Bracelet. And you'd have to empower once. But then you could do this. So... You know, if you have those paths on your pretender, you're probably not going to want to do it this way. But uh, this is actually a pretty nice way to turn water gems into death mages. Um, so anyway, that's kind of nice. And you can get these guys too, which is okay. Um, I think those are the gaze of death uh, cows. These dudes. Catoblepes. So we've talked about all the different randoms for that. Um, the other things which I'll just mention, uh, the so the types of units that you get, if you're reanimating, you're going to get shadows, which are basically these guys. They're stealthy, which is important because um, it allows you to do deep raiding. Uh, the problem is your normal kind of undead commanders, these guys and centurions are not stealthy. So you have to either suck it up and use one of your mages who are stealthy, uh, but then you really it hurts you when a mage dies. It doesn't really hurt you when a priest dies. Um, or you have to use uh, like a scout with a, uh, a Rod of the Leper King or something like that. Uh, but anyway, that's important. Uh, to get free spawn, let's talk about free spawn real quick. Um, the amount of free spawn you, the type of free spawn you get, it's going to be basically these little shit ghosts unless you have a fort and a temple. If you have a fort and a temple, then you're going to get these legionnaires. Um, who are pretty nice. They've got uh, magic weapons, a magic spear, they've got a shield. Um, and the shield combined with being ethereal is going to make them pretty effective against archers. Um, they have magic weapons, so basically it's going to be uh, half damage if they fail an MR check. Um, or if the, the opponent passes an MR check, I guess. Um, then these guys will do half damage. Otherwise, it's full damage, but you can see they don't hit terribly hard. Um, so versus player troops, like good player troops or buffed up player troops... These guys fall off really hard, especially if those troops have magic weapons. If the enemy troop has magic weapons, then the fact that their ethereal is going to be negated, they're going to be basically just 10 HP, zero protection, low attack density troops that are going to get mauled, absolutely mauled. The nice thing is they have kind of good magic resistance. Um, thir base 13 is pretty good, significantly better than long dead. Uh, and if you can buff them up with uh, Protection of the Shade Lands, then uh, it'll be significantly better. So, um, that is 
uh, the, the main kinds of troops. You, you'll occasionally get, let's see if we have any here. Well, you'll, there's some rarer troops. These are less rare. You get these guys who have fear built into them. Um, and then every once in a while, I don't see any here, but every once in a while, you'll get the rare type, which are like ghosts and they have, oh, here's a ghost. Um, so ghosts with life drain and fear. These are kind of the best summon you get. You can also occasionally get lictors, which I don't see any. Oh, here's some. So um, these guys are sacred, which is kind of nice. And they have a spectral axe, so they hit hard, but they don't have fear. Uh, but anyway, these are obviously pretty solid when you can find them. Um, now the chance of getting of getting the the high tier ones, uh, I believe, is a it goes up. I think it's a zero until you get Dominion five in a province. And once you have five Dominion, every point of Dominion you, you get after that is going to increase your odds of getting these guys. So ideally, your Dominion ten to get a higher chance of your higher quality summons. Um, the the priests are also going to free spawn and the mages will also free spawn. Mages will only free spawn in a province with a uh, lab and a temple and the priests will only free spawn in a province with a temple. Uh, I've done some testing on this and I haven't been able to determine whether building a lab is going to decrease the amount of priests you get. Other people have said that it does. So if you only want priests, you potentially you might get more priests by not building a lab. But, um, and labs are expensive, but getting the, I mean, these guys are pretty clearly superior to the, to the priests because A, they can research and you can see we're in magic three right now. They're pretty, pretty solid researchers because they've got, uh, this, uh, which anyway, magically attuned researchers. So basically they're significantly more effective. Um, anyway, um, yeah, the. The, the rate at which you get these guys is about two per year, I have found, if you're high scales uh, with a lab and a temple. So the way, the one way to think about it, because you're going to want to be doing temples and forts uh, either way, is how much is it worth putting a lab in a fort? And one way to think about it is these guys cost, um, they cost 11 gems. And you're going to be getting about two per year if you have pretty high dominion in a fort and a lab and a temple. And so that's about 22 gems per year. Um, and then if we say that's about 12 months, how many is it per turn? Well, it's about two death gems per turn. So the question is, how is, is building a lab is 500 gold worth two death gems per month? And I would make the argument that it probably is. But I would not, I think it's a balance of how much do you want to do that and how much do you want forts? Because... The opportunity cost of the 500 is you're not building another fort. So um, for me, the priority is, especially early, getting forts and temples out uh, because those are things that are going to generate value very quickly. And they're also going to make it harder for people to rush you. Uh, but as the game starts to kind of go on, I think there is a lot of value in putting labs in your, your forts to get uh, free spawn mages. So with that, we're going to go ahead and go to pretender design. Um, I think with Lemuria, and I, I've changed, at, at first I was like, okay, I'm going to play Lemuria again, and we're just going to do kind of the traditional build that I'd done last time, uh, but here I had reanimators instead of reforming flesh. So just the same thing, Arcane Finesse is pretty good on these guys. Uh, recuperation and reforming flesh, a little bit of magic resistance. Uh, dormant, so they come online, I've got a pretty cool, powerful mage here. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, really, when this lady, when... Hubba Hubba comes online, how much is she going to help me win my first war if I'm getting rushed? And the answer is, not that much. We can use her to site search, which is great, but, you know, not a phenomenal use of her time, because a lot of these paths are already going to site search, like, we're already probably going to site search a fair amount of low air, we're already going to site search astral and death. The only real addition here is uh, nature. Um... And then I'm not going to have enough research, like, turn 12, if I get rushed, that she's going to do much. You know, like, she's not going to be a great caster. Now, in the later game, that the Arcane Finesse, I think, is going to pay off. And having an Immortal Pretender God will pay off. And so this would, I think, be a better chassis than what I take in this game. In, if I don't get rushed. But I think when you play Lemuria, you have to kind of plan on getting rushed. 
like people getting all up in your grill and you having to fight them off. So uh, with that being the case, you know, how are we going to deal with it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I think there's a few options. Uh, one of the options is this guy, and this I did not end up choosing, but I think this is a very viable build. Um, you can see we are, well, let's talk about scales real quickly. We're gonna trash all of these first. Death already starts off trashed. I don't think cold starts off trash. So we get to trash cold, productivity, and, uh, and order. Get to trash those and then we're going to get fortune and magic. Now you can ditch these. I think ditching magic is going to be pretty bad because uh, it's gonna really hurt your research. Uh, it's going to really hurt the stats of your thugs. And uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of dumping magic. You could dump misfortune. Um, you're gonna be forded up. You know, you're gonna have uh, plenty of ghosts everywhere to take back things Indies take from you. You can definitely make a case for dumping this. And if you dump it, you're going to get a lot of scale points. Like Misfortune 3, you're going to get a lot. The problem is you're going to get magic is fading events, I think. Or maybe you have to take Drain for that. But you're going to get a bunch of bad events. Now, you can't get negative income in a land, which is nice. It's going to cap out at zero because you're going to get like a lot of this province's lost 10 permanent income or something like that. So that part, there's a fair amount of Misfortune that you could handle. It's not going to affect you. The thing, and the reason I think it's worth taking luck, is when you take, uh, or when you play Lemuria, you may be kind of rich at the beginning, but by the mid game, you're gonna be pretty poor. And what that is going to mean is the income that you are potentially going to get from luck is going to be way more important for you than it would be for most other nations. Um, and that's because you're kind of poor. So, you know, it's very possible by the mid game, you're getting more income from luck than you are from everything else. Um, and then the magic gems are gonna be pretty useful to you. And then the mages are gonna be pretty useful to you. And there's also an event where you get basically a, uh, a Wraith Lord, which would be pretty sick. Um, so anyway, yeah, you, there's, I think good reasons uh, to go for luck. Um, but you certainly, this is one you can trash if you really want to go all in on a, uh, on either having your God awake earlier or having a better bless. Now, uh, what is the reason for getting the Titan of Death and Rebirth? Well, it's one of the, it's basically the cheap, cheapest Titan chassis to get this particular bless, Fortitude, re, uh, Reforming Flesh and Recuperation. Uh, why do I like each of these? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, one is that Fortitude is going to give us, uh, it's going to make our consoles very, very thuggy. So it's, they're going to be much harder to kill from kind of normal, normal weapons. Um, and it's going to synergize really well with Reforming Flesh because it's basically going to double almost the effectiveness of Reforming Flesh. Uh, why do we want recuperation? Well, there's a few reasons. One is we have immortals. They're going to clear a fair amount of their afflictions when they come back to life. But this will mean that, you know, if they don't clear the ones we need, which will happen a fair amount, like they'll get feeble-minded or they'll get their head cut off. And it can take them a while to get rid of all the afflictions. This will make it so you're not really having to send them back in to die again, just to hope you get a better role on uh, getting their afflictions taken away. But that in and of itself is probably not enough of a reason to get recuperation. And I am probably guilty of getting recuperation in scenarios where I shouldn't because there's like some theoretical long-term payoff that probably is too far in the future to really be worth it. But the other reasons you get uh, recuperation are it opens up tarts for you in the late game, which I think is really important for Lemuria to have a good path access and things like that, especially when you start struggling with things like assassin spam, which I think are going to come out in the late game. Um... So anyway, you have recuperation, which I think is pretty damn helpful for that. The other thing uh, that is pretty pretty damn good for is you have astral mages who can mind hunt. Um, and if you're doing mind hunting, having recuperation on your mind hunters, super nice. So um, the the combination of all of those, I think, makes it uh, pretty damn pretty damn valuable. Um, <laughs> now on this particular chassis, he's going to come online around turn twelve. And he is going to be an absolute beast. Um, you'll need to put some basic armor on him. And, um, you know, you ideally want to have, like, enchantment, what, two or three, so you can do personal regen. 
And once you have that, though, he's going to be pretty damn strong. You know, ideally, you also have um, have uh, stone skin or something like that, or iron skin. Um, but especially once you have basic gear and iron skin. Now, those things, having all those things I mentioned, enchantment three, you know, alt three, having all those for this guy, that, you know, it doesn't seem like a very high target, but for Lemuria, it's going to be a little bit of a ways. So potentially, you may want to have this guy sit inside and research uh, for a little bit when he first comes out, just to get those basic targets before you send him out to site search if you're not in war. Um, but what you will get is, uh, once you have some basic gear on this guy, he will be able to super combat pretty hard, and he's not going to be vulnerable to a lot of the things the rest of your army is vulnerable to. He's not going to be vulnerable to magic weapons particularly. He's not going to be vulnerable to... Um, um, to, to undead killing weapons like holy scourges or things like that. Uh, he's going to be pretty damn strong. He will still be kind of vulnerable to things like Soul Slay, but if you're fight using him defensively and you're fighting in your Dominion, uh, well, not so much, because he's going to have pretty high MR from being uh, in your Dominion. He's going to have a lot of HP. He's not going to get any benefit from Reforming Flesh, but he will benefit from Fortitude. Um, and then you don't really care about afflictions you've got on him because of, well, you know, recuperation. So... Um, I would say this guy is definitely capable of bailing your ass out if you've got some big doom stack on your one of your forts, and this is like a get the fuck off my fort guy. And so now, for somebody to fight, uh, like to to rush you effectively, they have to be able to deal with a lot of ghosts. They have to deal with their armies starving. Uh, they have to deal with uh, consoles popping out and fighting them, and then they also have to deal with your god uh, potentially with some basically as a as a medium super combatant depending on how much uh, gear you put on and what you have researched. So I would say that combination makes this guy a very viable pick, and I was very tempted to pick him. Um, and it's not very greedy. I think this is probably the, one of the least greedy builds I can have, meaning by, by not greedy, I mean you are less likely to get your ass kicked early because you're going for some late payoff strategy. Um, so anyway, I've shown you Hubba Hubba. I've shown you um, Fortitude. Now, here's High Dom All Demi-Lich. So, this is a, a Demi-Lich, which is going to be the cheapest chassis for a lot of the different blesses we want. But it's a mobile, and in that way, it's greedy. Uh, because it can't really do much except sit there. But I could go with this Dominion 9, which is going to mean potentially more Death Gems. It's going to mean more free spawn of every type. Um, and then I get All and Reforming Flesh and Recuperation. Now, if I had to pick between Fortitude and All, I would get All. And the reason is because, you know, like you can empower an earth and you can do temper flesh, which is going to kind of negate fortitude uh, for some of your better thugs. Uh, so that's one reason. The, the second reason is um, it, it synergizes really well with fear. So after surviving a few rounds, um, you're going to basically have gotten their morale down a fair bit through fear. And then the, uh, the awe is really going to kick in, and they're not really going to be able to hit him. The other thing it synergizes well with is defense, because awe is going to come prior to defense, I think. And what that means is we're going to have significantly less harass because of awe, which means our defense is going to be more effective. So, and, the more, and all these three things synergize together, because the more fear we have, the lower their morale, the more often awe works, the less the harass penalty the less they harass down fear. I mean, the, the less they harass down our defense and the more effective our defense is. Um, fire also pretty useful. Um, fire death is a kind of nice cross path. We can get the King of Bane, Bane fires later, but you know, um, it's pretty nice being able to fire fend and things like that. And flame spirits are also pretty resistant to assassins and stuff if we end up getting them later. So there's value in this. The, there's a little bit that's greedy about it. One, there's things that are not greedy. Like, I'm basically committing when I get this to when he wakes up, he's going to sit there and research. He's not going to site search. He's not going to do shit. He's just going to research. And sometimes that's a good check because it's like research is going to pay off sooner often than site searching, especially site searching non-death paths. Site searching fire, like I can already site search death. Sight searching fire in nature is like medium run payoff or like long run payoff, right? Because I have to not only research stuff that I can do with it, but I also have to like collect enough gems from it. So it's like a pretty long payoff. It's good, 
but it's not going to be as quick of a payoff as research. So anyway, um, so in some ways it's not greedy because it's forcing me to research. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's greedy because I can never move this guy out to help with an army. Like there's some big battle coming up. I would really like to have a death five mage there or a, or a nature mage there. Well, he's stuck. He cannot move at all. He's just going to sit there. So there's some vulnerability we're going to get from picking this guy if we pick him. But Death Nine is really, I mean, uh, Dominion Nine is going to be really nice. It's going to give us more gem income. It's going to give us more free spawn. There's a lot of things about this that are not greedy. That, like, in some ways, this is a very non greedy strategy. Uh, but there's other things where we can't site search very well and we can't participate in battles, which I think it, it made me kind of go against it. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and pull up what I'm actually going for, um, and that is going to be off my porch. And off my porch, if I can type it in correctly, uh, off my porch is a uh, archmage, and that's because his highest path is fire, so usually want to get the rainbow that's got a path in your highest uh, your highest path and he's basically got the same thing all reforming flesh recuperation and uh, what's going to be nice about this is uh, he's also got these additional cross paths uh, and he can move around so what did I pay I basically paid three whole dominion points which is a lot it's a, it's a, it's a ton it hurts me to even think about the fact that I paid that for this but I paid those dominion points so that I could site search almost every path and that I have every cross path. Um, and I'm gonna have a little bit better research. So it's a big cost, but it's going to allow me to site search fire and uh, nature. Uh, we can twice born this guy. He can go participate in combat and be a, like a powerful nature or uh, fire mage. Twice born is also pretty nice because we can get um, we are, we're gonna have recuperation on him. So if he gets afflicted when he dies in his twice burning accident, he'll just uh, fix himself back up. Um, so yeah, it, those are the reasons I like this guy. Um, but, you know, it comes at a cost, it comes at a cost. And it, it's really just trying to balance all these different things. Uh, but I think, this is like this is going to be very good early game because my consoles are going to be very good around turn 12 or 13 when these guys come out or when this guy pops up um so that's going to kind of sure me up in the mid game and i think this path access is going to be pretty damn helpful in the late in the late game um you know it's going to get what are the cross paths that it's going to give me it's going to give me earth astral i potentially am going to have to empower this guy in earth uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Because Empowering Once in Earth is going to give me Earth Boots. I can now summon a Troll King, which is just huge to have some kind of Earth Access. Whereas if I have no Earth Access at all, it's going to be so hard for me to get started. If I don't have Indies that have an Earth Mage, like it's going to be literally forever to get Earth Magic. But if I have this guy running around, we find, you know, four gems of Earth Income in the first, you know, by turn 20, um, which would be pretty good. But... You know, if we did that, then or like turn 24, well, that's going to be enough where we're very quickly going to be able to empower. Um, we're going to be able to build earth boots. That'll get us up to earth three. Um, <clears throat> we're also going to be able to, through other guys, to do starshine skull caps, which means this guy can now do crystal coins. Um, and so uh, it means my other mages get up to astral five, which potentially, you know, it's just one empowerment away from being astral six, which means I get to fully climb up astral um, with, not with this guy probably, but with my, like an astral three grand lemur. So um, that's obviously pretty useful. Nature astral is going to be really nice for moonvine bracelets if I need to do that. And uh, what else here? Uh, we've got uh, Fire Water, which is going to give us pretty easy access to Staff of Elemental Mastery, which could be really useful. Um, and this is, we'll probably have to empower my Pretender once in water. <sighs> um, but after that, he'll be able to do, uh, basically get up to, to Water 4 once I'm at Construction 6. Uh, and that will mean Staff of Elemental Mastery. Uh, and that would be pretty sweet. 
uh, once I have one of these, it means also anybody, any of my water random Grand Lemurs can do Streams of Hades with the same gear. Um, so yeah, I think this guy, what is it? It's a, we're, we're pretty strong in the mid game. We're not as strong in the mid game if we went high, uh, high all, I mean, high dominion all that, uh, that Demi Lich, but it's going to be better for us in the late game. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. I think it's the right amount of greed. Um, because Lemuria is a nation where you really do have to worry a bit about the late game. It, you can fall off pretty hard. Now, some of these things you can kind of work your way around as Lemuria. You can take your death gems and you can turn them into specters to get uh, a death mage. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, an earth mage. And you can even get the earth astral cross path. So some of these things you can work your way around as Lemuria. But this is going to save me a lot of gems in doing that. Because who knows how many gems it would take. How many specters I'd have to summon. But uh, anyway. Um, this is who we ended up picking. Uh, if we look at what are some other things. You know you could do the Titan of the Forge. You can do basically all Fortitude and Reforming Flesh. Here we have skipped out on, um, on Recuperation. And Recuperation is not something you strictly need. Um, it is kind of a... It's a luxury, is what I'll say. So, um, this will make this build right here. You're only going to have five dominions, so it's going to be really low. Five is getting on the edge of being like too low. <coughs> like, not even worth considering it so low. And we've had to sack luck, so we're not going to be getting all the income from luck. But, if you are sure people are going to bum rush the shit out of you, consoles with all fortitude and reforming flesh are going to be scared scary they are going to be really scary they're going to be so hard to kill the thing is you have to kill them before they're which is going to be hard with fortitude you're going to, have to kill them before their chill aura and fear aura wears you down so that you're never hitting with awe in effect um you basically i think these consoles are going to be mostly immune to troops as i'm trying to say especially if you put multiple per square they're still going to kind of get wrecked by mages but, yeah, they're going to be pretty, pretty hard to kill with normal troops. Um, and then this guy obviously can function as a super combatant in his own right. And you've got really high pass. Death, uh, fire, earth. Like, these are very high pass. Um, so, yeah. I, I would give this guy a thumbs up. If you, like, if you're doing a blitz with Lemuria, might be the best. Because... This is going to be, like, that's why we named him Anti-Greed. Because he is all about short-run payoff. All about short-run payoff. And sometimes that's what matters. Uh, I don't think there's much else I really want to show you. You know, there's other things you could do. You could do gray ones. Like, this is a dormant. Uh, where we've got defense and fire shock resistance and reforming flesh and recuperation. You know, this is all fine. Um, if you're worried more about, like, if you're fighting Abyssia, or, you know, the Abyssia or Kalem player in your game is really good, you know, you may swap out off for something else. And the Grey Ones are definitely a chassis to consider. Um, but I don't, I'm not a, I'm not going to go up and uh, kind of profess my undying love for any of these. Um, attack, the, this is kind of like a Rainbow Demi Lich, um, where we basically get similar stuff. I think the Demi Lich we get more than we do with the Grey Ones. Um, so anyway, anyway, you can see we get uh, defense and attack and swiftness. So this is going to be plus three defense, which is going to matter a lot when you're at, you know, what are they, 19 or something by default for your consoles. And then the attack is going to help too, especially if you have parry items on them. And I'm, I'm hinting at some of the things we're going to be doing in the game. Um, you also, if you want to with the Demi Lich, um, you remember I said there's the the high dom all build where we've got uh, nine dominion. The other thing you can do, um, and this will be better in the late game, but is a little more greedy. You can get uh, basically um, an astral four demi lich. It's going to take your dominion back down to six, but we're going to get plus three MR, uh, which is going to make these guys, your consoles much harder to kill with soul slay and stuff like that in combat. Uh, I mean, they're going to get really, really high Dominion. I mean, uh, MR with, with this going on. Um, the other thing it's going to allow you to do is Demi Liches cannot Cloud Trapeze, but I believe they can teleport. So you can now potentially teleport this Demi Lich onto an enemy army, 
and uh, he could do uh, Winds of Death and things like that. So, um, I think this is, yeah, this is definitely worth considering. Um, if we compare it to uh, my my build, what we're, we're giving up, we're basically getting a better bless with that other one. Um, we're getting, I think, yeah, he can also wear a skull sign, skull shine, star shine skull cap. So that guy, well, he doesn't have earth, but if we got, if we got a crystal coin somehow, he could get up that other lich could get up to astral six and he could basically do all the high astral gear. I mean, so that is kind of nice. Um, and then the, the plus three MR is also going to be nice. Uh, what we're giving up though, is the ability to site search. Um, and then also to have a, somebody to participate in, in, in combat. So, um, and, and the, the three MR is going to be nice, but early game, it's not going to matter as much. So I would say this is going to be one of the stronger builds in the very late game. Um, but probably, or like in the, the late mid game, but you're going to kind of be paying for it in the mid game when you are going to want to have your God maybe coming to like a pretty important fight. And this guy can't really move and participate on like a battle outside a fort. You teleport him inside a fort, or you could teleport him to an army not on a fort. But a lot of times, the des like if you're in a desperate situation as Lemuria, there's going to be an army on top of your fort, and you want to fight them outside of the fort. Um, like Wind of Deathing as they come into your fort, mm, lots of times not great. Anyway, um, that my friend is the uh, the Demulich. And I think the last of the builds which we are going to pull up, we've kind of been through a lot of them. Uh, if we were just going to kind of, I'll go through the, the the blesses really quickly here. But if we were to kind of just look at which which are the blesses that we want, basically your, your blesses are going to be, you want a thug bless. So um, anything that's going to be good on a thug, fire, uh, not fire shield, uh, heat aura, awe, any of the resistances are things to consider depending on who you're fighting. Uh, quickness is is not bad here. It's going to be really expensive. I don't think you can afford it, but um, it is going to be. I mean, quickness synergizes really well with the kinds of thugs you have. You know, you don't get encumbrance. They really like the attack and defense. Uh, definitely, if it wasn't so expensive, I would probably figure out a way to take it. But it's really expensive. You also like magic, so the the fact that it costs magic isn't a huge deal. But it's just so hard to take this. I mean, you'd have to you'd have to basically go Oracle, I think, to take it. And it means it's going to be kind of hard for you to take other stuff. But I, I've looked at a couple builds with quickness. I just never could find anything that I, I felt really would make it work. Uh, but but that would be phenomenal if you could take it somehow. Um, over here, you know, you could do larger, probably not. You could do fire shock resistance, pretty good. Fortitude's obviously pretty good. Hard skin, actually, I didn't realize, is actually going to be more viable than I thought because, um, like, your consoles have built-in five natural protection. I mean, eight. So this will jump that eight up to uh, 13, uh, which is going to be pretty good. But you get diminishing returns with how that's going to stack with armor. So, but uh, higher armor values are, like, incrementally better. So I don't know. I think this is worth considering. It's also going to be cheaper than Fortitude. Um, and yeah, the thing is when the, like the undead killing weapons come out, like Holy Scourges, I think Fortitude can get it where you can survive a Scully, a Holy Scourge hit. Hard skin's not going to help at all. Um, but I mean, Holy Scourges are still going to kill you. Like you, you can survive one, uh, but, uh, probably not more than that. And even then you might not be able to I think if you get hit for like 80, and you take 20 off of it with protection, you're at 60. And then you cut it in half, you're at 30. Yeah, that's right at about how much hit points they have. I can't remember if they have 30 or 25, but there's a good chance you even still die. Um, anyway. Um, coming down here, Arcane Finesse, you can go for the caster focus stuff, which, you know, Arcane Finesse is going to be great because Astro and Death all needs MR checks. And then uh, Major and Minor Magic Resistance, pretty good. Fate weaving not horrible, especially if you combine it with one of the auras. Um, and I think it's also going to help with uh, some of the attack defense rolls too, but I, I don't know how that works. 
Uh, fear, we already have. Uh, reforming flesh is basically the one you want in death. I don't think there's anything else that really bears heavy consideration, except maybe undead command, if you don't want to go heavy into a death bless. Uh, in nature, there's a lot of it we don't need, like you already have poison resistance. Recuperation's good. Uh, Berserker might be okay. Yeah, it would be worth considering. It would make consoles pretty good. Um, bark skin, I think, is going to be mostly a no-go. Uh, regeneration, you could also get, but probably too expensive. Um, and I don't think there's too much synergy between stacking, reforming flesh, and regen, because especially if you're undead, the kind of stuff which is going to kill you is going to kill you if you have both of these. So having one's going to be enough to just mitigate chip damage. But if you're running into like wither bones and dust to dust and stuff, uh, you're going to die anyway. So having two stacks of regen isn't going to help. But regen does work on your guys. So for, for whatever reason you want to do it, you can. Uh, blood surge would also be pretty nice. The attack, defense, strength, all good. Uh, the problem with blood is it's not a very useful path on your pretender since you're not really going to be a blood power as a huge uh, pop kill nation. So uh, I think we will end by uh, flashing up off my porch uh, again and uh, stay tuned for the game. Here's off my porch, our rainbow sight searching, uh, twice burning fool, and uh, we will see you in game. Cheers. <laughs>